welcome back to this gathered schoolhouse today we are talking about um, creating a unit specifically i'm sharing with you guys sort of how i am creating our human body unit this is the first time i've really done it this way so i'm going to share with you what i'm doing like i said so far it's working but we are very newly into our school year so um, i will maybe do an update follow up at the end of the unit let you know how it went what we used, what we didn't use. But right now I just wanna show you everything that I've gotten for this unit, how I plan to use it and how I set things up. Everything that I have here that I can, I will link down below for you guys so you can check it out. Um, I do have one thing that I ordered that's not in, so I'll share, I'll talk about it, but and I will also link it, but I don't have it to actually physically show you. Um, also, as always, I get a lot, a lot of inspiration from other um, homeschoolers, other people on Instagram, other people on YouTube, other people on Pinterest. So uh, a lot of this stuff is inspired by other people and the way they do things. Um, my chalk wall back here that I'll show you guys in a second, totally inspired by um, Serena and her chalk walls that she does for her units. And I've done so much just like digging into, like I said, Pinterest and Instagram and things for inspiration and ideas. So I will try as I go along, if I can remember where I first saw something or heard about something, to give credit and mention those people. Um, I probably will forget something or someone along the way because that's just the way it goes, but I am not the creative genius behind all of these ideas. This is just sort of how I've taken all of the things that I've learned and made it into my own, which is I think a lot of just what homeschooling is and creating your own curriculum and units and things looks like um, just kind of taking things and making them your own. This first unit that we are doing is the human body unit. This is um, one of the science units by the good and the beautiful and we decided to start with this one because it was just one that my kids had a lot of interest in and i like to sort of go where they lead if there's something they're super interested in and this was one of the things so we decided to start here if you look at the table of contents this unit is broken down into 10 different lessons now our intention is to use this sort of as our spine so this is the basic uh, flow of things but we are going to expand a lot on each lesson um, and some lessons we're going to be adding more or adding in completely that don't exist in this right now for example my kids really are interested in understanding a little bit more about dna that's why i have it up there on the board and we'll be talking a, a little bit more and deeper about genetics and dna um, because that's something that they're very interested in with our family being made up the way that it is um, through adoption so that's something that a topic that they're kind of interested in learning more about. So we will probably be expanding on that a little more um, than the average person might at this stage and age for their kids. Okay, so when I go to create a unit, the first thing I do is I just created this in InDesign and I write what the unit is. And then this is where I design what I want for the chalk wall. Like I said, I, Serena, I think does something similar to this. I think she actually has a free printable on her um, blog for creating units. Um, but this is just one I threw together in InDesign for me to use. Again, say what unit it is, sort of figure out what I want to do for the chalk wall. And then I have listed down here resources I already have, resources I need to buy, field trips we want to take, and um, Netflix and YouTube videos I want to download, add to our playlists and all of that stuff. Now, one of the things I still have left to do for this unit is to come up with my Netflix and YouTube list. I had all that whole sheet filled out and designed and then one of my kids threw it away. It was sitting on my desk and now it's gone and I can find it nowhere. Otherwise, I would show you what the, what the full sheet looks like, uh, but unfortunately, someone threw it away. So that's fine. I have all the resources. I've already done all of that. Resources I have, resources I need. I've already gotten everything that I need. Um, the only thing I have left to do is sort of plan our field trips and then plan the Netflix and YouTube things that we plan to watch and, and videos I wanna add to those lists. When it comes to the chalk wall, again, I just try to sort of highlight. I use the Good and the Beautiful's um, by like their lesson plan layout to kind of determine what I wanna put on there. And for example, systems. Somebody pointed out on Instagram, you don't have all the systems listed on there. I know, that's the systems that 
this unit is going to cover and the ones that we are going to cover right now. Um, so that's why not all of the body systems are listed on there. But yeah, it's really fun and sort of, you know, an artistic thing that we get to do. My husband actually did the skeleton and this heart lung design. He did that. Um, for me because he is actually a far far better artist than I am so I did the rest but he did that and I just thought this was really cute I saw this on Pinterest the recipe for a body um, 206 bones 640 muscles 32 teeth I just thought that was really fun and um, to create this we actually used a combination of just regular chalk as well as these soft pastels that I got from Amazon I will leave those linked as well I was pleased to find that they actually come off just as easily as regular chalk. So that's nice and it gives you a little more pop of color um, than just the sort of regular chalk colors that at least that I found available. Okay, so this is my basic sheet that I used to design my unit. This is the Human Body Notebook by The Good and the Beautiful. This page here that covers the unit information that you're gonna need a science journal. They recommend you have a science wall. For right now, this is our science wall. We put our vocabulary words up on. I don't think they'll all fit here, so I'm gonna have to figure something else out. Um, and again, it just goes into like lesson prep that it should be really easy to follow instructions. And then of course, teaching older children. So if you have grades seven and eight, there are things that you have a little magnifying glass here and you can expand on them if you want to. Um, to prep, I've already gone through and laminated all of the vocabulary word cards just so I can cut them out and put them up when we get to that specific word. If you have them mail it to you, it's on pretty thick paper, but I just decided to laminate them because in this house, you gotta be pretty tough to last. Again, here you can see the table of contents that goes over everything that's in the unit and all of the different systems and stuff you're gonna cover. The supplies that you need and it tells you by lesson so you can make sure that you have everything either all ahead of time or you know a week ahead of time or just however you're planning on breaking it up um, it also has optional read alouds here and it tells you what those books are then it goes through lesson one it shows you your objectives preparation supplies needed optional read aloud and then again just like the good and the beautiful does it gives you exact wording on what to read to the children boxes to check as you go along um, activity that you're gonna do, what words you're gonna need to put on your science wall, what the kids are gonna do in their science journals. And then I put in these little pouches the um, like sort of student worksheets for each one. Because I have multiple students that are doing this, I just go through and print out um, extra copies of these from my printer and that's what I pass out to the kids. So I kind of hold on to the originals and just make copies for the kids to use. But yeah, so you can see and that's just how I've gone through and essentially broken up every lesson by all the lesson materials. So how I plan to do each lesson and how we've done it so far is look at what the good and the beautiful has, what they have for the lesson, what they want you to learn, and then we sort of expand on it. So I go through all of my resource books. Um, so let's say like, you know, lesson two is the skeletal system. So, so before we begin that, I will go through all of my resource books and I will flag the pages that have information about the skeletal system so that we can expand on it. Then I will go through my resources list and see, okay, great. Um, I have this documentary or this YouTube video about the skeletal system, about bones or whatever that I want the kids to watch. And so I will be able to, in my planning that I do in my um, Hobonichi, I will be able to then look and see, okay, this, you know, we're doing this today. So maybe today, this afternoon after lunch, we'll watch this video about the skeletal system or something like that. Or if there's a field trip that we want to take related to something. Here in Charlotte, we have a Discovery Place and a Discovery Place Kids. And so they often have exhibits and things especially related to the human body and things. So we will be sort of paying attention to what they have available and what we're doing that week. My intention is to pretty much do one lesson per week. So we will sort of dive into each system and everything about a week at a time. That's my plan. Like I said, I don't know what's gonna happen, but that's the plan. Okay, so that should sort of cover the, the Good and the Beautiful's unit. And let me just show you um, all of the things, the resources that we are using to expand upon what they have done. One of the things that I saw on Pinterest that I thought was so cute and I didn't even know existed, I love these tube, T-O-O-B. Um, we've gotten them before for different things like pioneers and stuff, but they have one for human organs. So it legit is like a little heart 
and a brain and intestines and a liver and all kinds of stuff in there. Let's quickly jump into, I'm gonna show you the Usborne books that I have first. Um, full disclosure, I'm a rep for Usborne, so if you purchase from any of these links down below, you're purchasing from my Usborne store. But I will say, if you search on Pinterest or YouTube or anything, people creating units and things are gonna talk a lot about Usborne because they have some amazing Sorry, Usborn. I always say it like with, like with a Z, it's not. It's just I'm a dingleberry and that's how I pronounce things sometimes wrong. So um, <laughs> it's Usborn. But when I say it, it sounds like Usborn, like Ozzy. Anyways, um, so the Usborn books. Uh, you will find that a lot of people use these, especially I love all their fiction and stuff like that, but their nonfiction and sort of resource style books are amazing. So this one is the flat book, See Inside Your Body. But you just lift the flap here and it gives further information, how your blood pumps. It's really cool, all the different things that it covers. And I love these See Inside books. They have the little flaps that you lift and the kids love that. This is also the Usborne First Encyclopedia of the Human Body. You know, we'll be using resources like this to expand on like DNA and genetics and things. So there's pages in here about that. Um, again, another really good resource. Also this Usborne Look Inside Your Body. This one has over a hundred flaps to lift. And books like this are the type of books that I leave out for my kids to just look at and find and discover at any time. I've noticed a huge difference. If I put all these books away, um, then my kids only open them when we're doing the unit. If I leave them out on display, like either on these little mini easels that I've had forever in a day, or just laying out in a basket, something that they know that they're allowed to access, then I will find them just sitting on the couch, flipping through them, um, talking with their siblings about them, reading about things. Uh, so I just leave it there so that they have them to sort of discover, even if they're learning about things or reading about things that we're not on yet, like maybe we haven't talked about the muscular system yet, but they're reading about it. I don't care, like they're discovering, they're learning, they're reading, they're taking some initiative, and I like that. So that's why I try to leave especially books like this out um, because they're intrigued by, they loved this page, the senses. They're intrigued by these sort of flat books and stuff. So then I also have the Usborne Big Book of the Body. This one is really cool. It's actually one of those that has multiple, ah, can you see all that? Like all the muscles and everything, it opens up and it's just like a big, I need mean, tons of stuff. Here's the bones. It's really, really cool. So just lots of neat information, really cool graphics, things that grab kids' attention. Um, and this one, like I said, has like those four giant fold outs in it. So this is the big book of the body. And this one is really fun too. This is the human body shine a light book. So you open this up and if you've never seen any of the Usborne shine a light books before, they have this page here and you hold it up um, to, the, to the window to light. And when you do that, I'm not gonna be able to do it on camera. When you do that, it shines through and shows the kids something on the other side, if that makes sense, to like make the two things come together. So you'll see the bones here, but when you shine it through, you'll see the girl and her arm. And it's just really cool. The kids really, really like it. So this one is a shine a light book for the human body. And the last book that's an Usborne book is this little one. This is called Your Body. This is a little smaller book. It's from the Beginners, the Usborne Beginners series. Pretty simplistic in explaining things. And I think this is great for the younger ages. Um, Jonah specifically, he can really understand when we're talking about these things, like what it means. This is the human anatomy models. We have obviously not put these together yet. Um, it comes with the skeleton. I got the set of four. So it comes with the skeleton, the body, the brain, and the heart. And it's just these little um, sets that you kind of put together. So we'll do these as we cover each thing. They will live out up on our shelves up there where the kids can kind of see them. I saw on Pinterest, someone shared this um, human body model that was a little bit bigger. These are really small. So I think these will be fine for Kennedy and Shelby. It says ages eight plus, but I think for the younger kids, these will be a little bit harder um, to utilize. So I found one that is bigger. It is more expensive as well. Um, and I will link it down below. I think I saw somebody share about it on Pinterest and I had to really hunt down on the interwebs to find it. And I found it from some kind of obscure website, but it was decently priced compared to what I'd seen in other places. So I'll leave that link down below if you wanna check that out. We also got this from Melissa and Doug. This is like, you put the little guy, you've got your little guy right here, or girl, literally, it has all the parts in here. Um, and you have, 
different things. You can put muscles, skin, clothes. Um, now it does have, I'm gonna show you like, it does have the anatomically correct lower half for male or female. So if that is bothersome to you, then you would either wanna take those out or maybe pass on this, but it does have like, there's the female. Um, yeah, so you put like little muscles and stuff like that on and it's magnetized, so you put them on there. Um, so yeah, that one is, like I said, anatomically correct. So if that's bothersome to you, you might wanna pass on this one. But I thought it was really neat and my kids have really enjoyed playing with it. Um, and then we also got, this was on the recommendation of one of you guys, these Professor Noggins Human Body Card Games. We actually got one for multiple different units and things that we're doing. We got the US one, the countries one, the space one, um, and then this one. So it's a little game that you can play, but it also just has like, um, look at the little baby in the belly, but it has easy and hard questions with the answers. So it's just sort of like a quiz game that you can play. Uh, and that's really fun because we love to play games. So it says ages seven and up. Definitely can use it with the two older girls and Noah especially especially in this one. There's a lot of cards about like digestive stuff, so about um, passing gas and things, and boys find that hilarious. So, all of the rest of this stuff I'm pretty sure I ordered on Amazon. This is a How Does Your Brain Work book, just a very, very basic, basic, basic book. This one is How Do Your Lungs Work. Again, these break things down super simple, so these are great for Noah. Then I also got um, a few of this series of books, and these were very inexpensive. This is The Digestive System, a true book, a scholastic book, just lots more information in here, as well as the respiratory system, and then the nervous system in this one, talking about the information highway. Um, so those are really cute, and like I said, these were pretty inexpensive. Um, just to dive deeper, this one is, is from Time for Kids. This is called The Five Senses. Again, that's kind of what it looks like on the inside. We also got The Magic School Bus Presents the Human Body. My kids like Magic School Bus stuff. Um, I have some pages marked here already. Uh, but again, a lot, you know, a lot of times the information is gonna repeat, obviously, book to book, but it has multiple, when you have so many kids, like there's so many different resources um, that they can look at. And then this is the Discovery Kids Factivity Journey Around and Inside Your Amazing Body. This book is actually really, really cute um, and fun to look at. This is one that I also tend to leave out um, for the kids, look inside your bones squishy stomach, waterworks, inside your eye. Um, and I think this one, from what I flipped through and looked, seems to do a really good job of explaining things in a way that makes it easy for the kids to understand. Um, these I got from Amazon, these are human x-rays, and this is what I was talking about getting to use with the light box. When we get to bones and talking more about bones, it, here's an example of what one looks like. Obviously I don't have the light box. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty cool. It shows you where on the body, what you're looking at, and then you have this x-ray to look a little closer. So with all these different ones. I think this is really neat, and the kids are actually really, really excited about this. I also have this, The Magic School Bus, A Journey Into the Human Body. This is like some kind of a game. I honestly haven't even opened it yet, but I found this on it. Um, Amazon and it looked very interesting. It's sort of like science experiments kind of thing. It's from the Young Scientists Club. And yeah, you make a stethoscope, measuring heart rate. So it's sort of just a hands-on way to learn about these things. Again, these are the models. This is the body. They're still taped together. This one's the brain, the heart model, and then the skeleton model. Here's just a closer look at the tube with all of the anatomy parts in it. All right guys, so that is sort of everything about how I create our unit. As you can see, I try to plan as much ahead of time, gather everything ahead of time, so that I'm not scrambling to find things during the week, like, oh, we're starting the skeletal system, I've gotta find everything that I wanna use for the skeletal system. I don't like to do that, so I wanna have as much of it done ahead of time as possible, and all of these resources and stuff help me to do that. And like I said, it's so great having the books just sort of out for the kids and propped places on the easels and different places for them to discover and learn. So hopefully this sort of gives you a peek into how I create units, how we use them. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And like I said, everything I talked about, if I can, I will link it down below for you to find if it's something that you're interested in finding and using as a resource for yourself and for your homeschool. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all again really soon.
拜。Bye.